Welcome back to 1497 Podcast. We got a special guest here today. Before we even get into that, I'm your host, Jonathan Keaton. And let's get right into the show. Special guest here today, Matthew Mashmeyer, the man, the myth, the legend. Me and Mash go way back. Matt, how are you doing today? Man, just living the dream, man, out here in Florida. Just trying Ooh. to enjoy my, my break before I got to go back to school. But, man, just embracing Ooh. Embracing the good life. Oh, he, he live in a little Southern culture. Okay, I feel yeah. you. I feel you. Yes, okay. sir. First question I got to ask you, Mash. When we were like five or six years old, we were talking about our dreams with our homies. So, like, with you, it was football. So, what made you start playing football? You know, um, I started back in the fourth grade. Um, I was on the Ravens uh, in the St. Raphael League. And, you know, that all started with, you know, my dad playing at Notre Dame. Uh, he was a national champion in 1973. And that's kind of where I grew the passion. I'd spend, you know, Saturdays and Sundays watching games with him. And then, you know, as I got older, started going to high school games on Friday nights, man. And so I really embraced football and really loved it. You know, I loved all the other sports I did. But, man, it just it felt special. It was a nice special connection I had with my dad um, to share that same passion with him. Um, you know, I had my brother play soccer. So um you know I, I, I'm hoping that I'm the favorite child because I chose football <laughs> but uh it's something that you know I get to share with my dad and that means a lot to me so um so it really just felt like you know it was what best suited me as I went through life uh went through high school and you know had to make a decision to whether you know continue whatever sport I really wanted to do um uh, whatever I was kind of getting the options at and I just felt like football is the best fit it gave me the best opportunity and I, I absolutely love where I'm at at Kansas State so that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Mr. Mash, by your dad, love him, such a beast. And you're just you just been around like football all your life, so it's right, like yeah, it's like important for you to just like stick down that path because like it's been so close to you. So exactly. my second question is, what is your all time favorite football moment? Favorite football moment? Well, you know, I am in Florida, so I think I gotta I gotta go with it right now. Ooh, okay, pretty okay. Re- pretty recent. Um, but I'm a big I'm a big Dolphins fan, so um, the Miami Miracle I think has to be one of my my favorite moments uh, of football. Uh, I remember I remember it because um, my my sister in law is a Patriots fan, and I think it was either my birthday or maybe like it was right around my birthday, and it was at um, the Dolphins were home, and I just remember I'm watching on NFL Red Zone. I'm just like. You know, the score never went final and they switched it to whatever game. And I'm just like freaking out. I'm like, like, I'm just thinking in my head. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. We just did we just score. Like what just happened? Like they the f- score didn't go final for like three minutes and I'm freaking out. And, you know, they come back on. And he's like, you will never believe this. And um, so, I mean, I think it's well suited, you know, that I'm in Florida and I, I share that <laughs> as my favorite experience. Yeah, I, I love that moment, too. I, I was able to watch it live. Ryan Fitzpatrick just chucking it Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Even though, even though you know me, I love my Bills. I'm a big yeah, fan. I, oh, I know, I know. But seeing the Dolphins win, it, it hey, made man. me shut a tear a little bit. It, it exactly, me, you know. <laughs> he's, a home, he's a hometown man for, for Buffalo. So it made me happy that he got Right, play. you know, right. it, gives us, it gives us an opportunity. I saw that, you know, others, now that Tom Brady's gone out of the division, exactly. it belongs That's to the two I'm of us because we all know we know the Jets aren't going to do anything about That's it. That's what so I'm saying, man. It belongs That's to the two of us. Exactly. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> It's the Bills and Dolphins division to win. That, that, that's right. It is. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad either way. I wouldn't be mad. Right. Either way. right. So, speaking of favorite football moments, we know you as Naperville Norse poster child for the football program. <laughs> so talk to me about your favorite high favorite high school football moment. And then on to that, talk to me about your favorite high school moment, just overall looking at all the four years. All four years. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, I know this one's going to hurt you, but one of my favorite, I'd say my team thing wasn't based on any individual performance, mm-hmm. um, was definitely beating Central our sophomore year. Just being as a, as a guy, you know, growing up in the Naperville area and all the talk was, 
you know, you had Peyton Thorne, you had Jane Reed, uh, Hayden McDonald, um, Tommy Coyne, you had all these studs. Um, and, you know, we just, no one really gave us a shot. Parents included, anyone in the, you know, in the city of Naperville didn't have, didn't give us a shot, you know, really didn't care. Everyone knew, oh, Central's going to win the game. So, you know, coming out and almost gave it up at the end. But, um, you know, we had a great, really great team that year. And it was a really fun experience. And, you know, that's just something that you, you never forget, especially, you know, growing up with, you know, all those guys. So um, it's just a fun experience just to play that game in general. You know, what? obviously it's great to win it, but um, just sharing that experience with those guys, especially even just the DBC conference. Um, you know, uh, get to enjoy this Sunday afternoon watching Mark Gronowski, you know, go win a national championship. Um, you just, you know, growing up playing with these guys, it's, it's, it's just really cool to see everyone's success and just having fun and um, being able to play each other in high school. It's just, you know, memories you don't forget because you, you get to college, you know, you don't really know most of these guys. So it's, it's a right. completely different experience. So, you know, I, I really cherish those moments I had in high school playing with my buddies and playing with my buddies. So um, I'd say that would probably be my – one of my favorite high school football moments um, purely based on individual performance. I'd say my Wobonzi game uh, where I had the 98 yard kick return, the 95 yard um, pick six to bring us in within one possession um, at the end of the game. And then the 80 yard um, screen pass I took, um, you know, if you had me on your fantasy league team that day, you know, you're probably solid. You're probably winning that week. Um, but, man, it was uh, – I mean, that's just just an amazing experience for me um, to do it on all ends and get to share that win with our team – with my teammates, my you know, our first win my senior year, just really especially – just really special. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think anything comes close to it. Um, you know, I've had a couple of good performances, you know, my freshman year, a couple of four touchdown games. I had a five touchdown game against the team my senior year. But um, – I had a one-handed catch, which was pretty cool. Um, when we went to Maslin, Ohio, and played Perry, that was close, close second, I'd say. Uh, but yeah, definitely the Wabonzi game. I really, really it was a really special moment to share it with. You know, obviously, all my all my classmates, my teammates, um, just everyone that was there. It was a really special moment for me. Yeah, you was on my fantasy team back then. I, I definitely, <laughs> I'm glad to. After that, well, I'm, I'm I'm hoping you won that week, then. No, I definitely did, man. I almost had to call the Naperville Fire Department because, my God, you was putting Wabonji's <laughs> field in flames, yeah. and it's just, it's just like amazing to like look at all your like individual success and like how far you came, like as a player. I just want to like congratulate you on your I success. Appreciate that. You're just doing so good, and on top of that, too, like being central, like. I thought I know it feels good being a cross town rival. Right, you know, absolutely. Central. It still it still feels good being a cross town rival. Mm-hmm. I remember freshman year, freshman B basketball. Right. You know, we, we, beat, we beat Central, and it felt. What, what was it? What was it? North Carolina John or Kentucky John? Kentucky John. Kentucky John. Kentucky John, Kentucky man. John. Oh, I remember being <laughs> on the bench, hyped up for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was some good times. So I know how that feels, and I absolutely. know absolutely. Kansas State a little bit so Mm -hmm. my next question kind of jumps into that so how was the recruiting process for you and was it stressful um absolutely uh probably one of the hardest things that I've ever you know been involved in um you know I went in there with a lot of confidence that you know I I would have the opportunity to play at a you know a division one school on scholarship not have to worry about putting my parents in any financial struggle or whatever it may be um and it didn't work out that way um you know I was very under recruited um was getting looks a lot of walk-on looks uh some FCS uh scholarships which uh was very thankful for um but you know playing with my dad playing at Notre Dame uh for me it was you know FBS or nothing um especially power five um I just you know growing up with a dad that's won a national championship that you just strive for those high goals and uh, this is just a once in a lifetime opportunity. You only get those four years of eligibility. And so for me, it was, it was a pretty easy decision to, you know, go when I got the opportunity to be a preferred walk on at Kansas state. I felt it was a great opportunity, a great challenge for myself uh, to really prove who I think I, who I think I am 
um, not only to the university, but to the world, you know, um, it, it, for me, you know, playing in the FBS, especially at the power five level is just a dream of mine. And, you know, I didn't want to live in regret, uh, you know, and, you know, credit to all the, a lot of the schools that offer me at the FCS level. There's no disrespect. It's such a great league. Um, you know, you see Mark Gronowski just, just striving there. And, um, but you know, it wasn't for me and, you know, everyone has their own, their dreams and aspirations. And some guys want to play it early and some guys, you know, want to trust in the process and, uh, you know, at, at one of their dream schools or, you know, something like that. And I felt like I fit that situation more. Uh, like I was saying, I just felt that, you know, this is, this is my dream. You get one opportunity. You only live once you get those four years of eligibility. It's like, I don't want to not take it and live in regret and say, damn, I could have played at that level. You know, I want to right. prove that I can play at that level. So for me, after I visited, I had a great official visit. Um, and then it was, it was a pretty easy decision from there. Uh, really tough to turn down coach back at uh, Illinois State because um, I visited right before I left for Kansas State. And it, it, it made it really tough for me. Um, but in reality, when I thought about it a lot uh, with my parents, it was really tough going to a school. That's, you know, about close to 10 hours away compared to something like two hours, you know, where uh, blooming to normal. And so that was a little tough on my mom, especially, but um, they understood my dreams. and They supported me. So a lot of that, you know, kudos to them, um, a lot of credit to them, you know, giving me this opportunity to, to, to do that um, because, you know, financially it's not the best situation, but they want me to follow my dreams. And, you know, that's what I would want for my, my kid as well. So, uh, you know, so much credit to my parents and everything that they've done and sacrificed for me. Yeah. And shout out, shout out to the Mash Myers parents as well. Like great. To Tom and Julie, man. <laughs> One of my favorite parents to ever, to ever come into the parent game. I, I love them both. And they just wanted you to follow, follow your dreams. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. And now right, you're just, yeah. you're living the dream of playing collegiate football at a collegiate level and it's just like it's just amazing so I know you kind of answered this before but like what made Kansas State the best choice for your talents and your education um you know so I a lot of my high school career um especially my junior senior year kind of figuring out what kind of major uh, best suited me. It was kind of leaning towards sports management. I love sports. It's been a part of my life for so long, you know, for as long as I can remember. And it's just, you know, I, I didn't know if it really suited me as a, you know, got closer to senior year and senior year is kind of, oh, business management, business administration. I visit Kansas State in January, at the end of January. And they have a sales program and my parents were both in real estate. That's how they met. I was like, damn, like, you know, I like the school. Um, it seemed like it had a really cool, you know, sales program that, you know, not a lot of other schools offer, you know, specifically. And so I, you know, I come back, I make my decision, but um, to kind of go back before all that, you know, driving in on campus when, after I got from the airport, there's just this feeling and there's a lot of pressure, you know, and you can just feel it, you know, the entire recruiting process. And as soon as I drove up, I saw the university itself, all the limestone were very well known for. It just felt right. And that that weight fell off my shoulders. And I was just like, damn, this like this is the spot. Like I haven't felt that anywhere else. Like I feel so comfortable. I feel at home like I'm, it, it just you just know when it was right. And it was just that feeling. So then I got to, um, you know, we hit quarantine and everything. And, you know, that really taught me about a little bit more about myself. Of, man, I don't want to stay inside and, you know, work in an office or whatever it may be. Like, I want to be out with people, you know, having that contact with, um, you know, clients with, you know, individuals that I just like talking to people, man, not through a phone, not through, you know, whatever system you could think of, like, zoom whatever it may be like i just want to be there with them man whether that's swinging some golf balls going out for dinner <laughs> with them you know whatever it may be um it just really taught me man like i want to be around people i don't want to sit in an office on a computer at a desk job all day so it made it really easy for me to choose sales and i've you know considered you know 
uh, real estate, just like my parents. And they were kind of like, nah, kind of avoid that. So I'm really going you know, to pursue uh, pharmaceutical sales, medical sales. So um, that's, that's the goal right now. You know, who knows where that will take me, but um, that's something that my parents really pushed. And I completely agree with them because, you know, they always had the best interest for me. And so, you know, I'm going to follow, you know, what they say and their guidance. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I yes. on, that, on that face, the, like face to face contact, because like with me too, like one of like one of the reasons I chose like sports journalism, because like for like the longest time, like I wanted, I want to be like sports broadcaster. Right. Yeah. I love sports. And on top of that too, I just love talking to people like anyone I see, I just like want to spark up a conversation with them. So right. I, like, I like that idea of you, like just, quarantine was like a lot for everyone but it right. was a good time to like think about stuff especially like in our shoes too like yeah in our senior year we got yeah. what we're gonna do. right we're going right off to college you know exactly it's, I mean, it's we got it's a lot of time to reflect yeah. um and i i felt like I, I really learned a lot about myself um so I, you know obviously a horrible situation that we're going through but i think it really helped me in my guidance of life and what i want to do next uh with it because you know football's not always gonna be there for me so Right. It's, you know, time to start thinking about a career and, you know, family and stuff like that. Like that all is going to come around the corner just like that. So, exactly. I mean, it, it was a, it was a great opportunity to really reflect upon myself and, you know, what the next step was for me. Exactly. I'm sure you share the same thing. Now, I know we, we touched on this a little before your little one handed catch. Yeah. It got it got on Sports Center. got on Sports Center, Matt. So talk to me. How did it feel when Sports Center showed a clip of you? My Sports Center clip was actually from my sophomore year. It was um, my kick return, along with Nick Calcagno's catch in the end zone when we came back from forty-two to zero. So that also would probably be one of those team performances uh, that was up there, probably behind beating Central. Coming back from forty-two is was something really special. Uh, that's a record, you know, in any record book in football, uh, that's the biggest comeback. And so being highlighted in that as one of the clips was a, a really cool experience, a dream of mine. Um, so being it, I mean, it's, <laughs> I didn't even watch it myself. It was actually a buddy of mine from another school who got the clip and sent it to us because we were actually in practice uh that day so uh because we uh we had a lot to learn from that game and so it was really cool um to see myself on sports center and get to share that memory of you know breaking a record so that was really cool but my one had to catch um another one another accolade i'm very proud of um you know it was just just went out for the ball he, he grabbed one of my arms and just had to make a play and um just Thankful for, you know, the placement of where Anthony Gabriel put the ball. And so really gave me the opportunity to just go out there and make a play. So i um, just happy that I was able to come down with it. And, uh, you know, we ended up losing the game. So that, that really sucked. But cool, really cool individual accolade. But at the end of the day, you know, if you don't win the game. It, it really means nothing at the end of the right. day. Right. No, nah, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Shout out to Anthony Gabriel, too. Absolutely. You know, creator of the pop pass, you know, my, my quarterback back in the day. But uh, yeah, right, like, that's, right. Pretty, that's pretty cool though. Just like seeing like, oh, mom, dad, look, I'm on TV. But like, not only that, like you're on ESPN. That's like the top of the top. And, like, right, I'm, man. Like 42. That's sh that should damn near be a 30 for 30. Right. You know, it it, it was really cool because you know I spent every morning usually as a kid. Like I was so involved with sports. I loved waking up in the morning before school and watching ESPN. So as a kid, you know, you dream of that day. And uh, for that to come as a sophomore in high school, that was really unreal experience um you know something that doesn't happen to everyone so really something i cherish I'm very thankful for especially because we got the win because uh that was gonna be a really rough drive home uh if we didn't yeah yeah that, that would have been a lot of running but right happened. right Sheesh. Sheesh. so kansas state matt kansas state matt what are you looking forward to going into your next season at kansas state um, you know, I'd say I definitely really um, love the opportunity uh, that we have ahead of us. Uh, we get to go um, and play in Jerry's world, 
uh, AT&T, our first game against Stanford on the 4th of uh, September. So, you know, that's a really cool experience, especially as a sophomore. Um, so we're, we're really excited as a team to get down there. We got some, a great group of guys. Uh, we made a lot of progress this offseason. So really looking forward to that opportunity to step on the field again. Um, but, you know, for me, what I really love about K-State is just the opportunity to growth. Uh, we got a great coaching staff. And uh, I have played offense, you know, his entire life. Um, you know, there's a lot of learning when it comes to playing the, the defensive back position. And, you know, I'm thankful for, you know, I have some guidance from my dad who played defensive back as well. Um, but, you know, we got such a great coaching staff and, you know, we're learning day by day. Uh, great strength, strength staff that's, you know, getting us all ready and prepared. And so really just trusting in the, in the process and, you know, um, when I'm ready, I'm going to be out there. Um, but until then, we're, we're going to be grinding in that weight room and on the field on uh, those morning runs and stuff like that and just getting prepared for, you know, week one against Stanford. Exactly. And Jerry's world too. That's a right. Very, exactly. Very exciting. platform. Wow. Very so, exciting. So with the season, since we're talking about the season right now, what's the one game that you're looking forward to in your schedule? Um, I'd say, I mean, it's hard to beat that one. Um, that's really cool. You know, making, I'd say a couple, um, I'd say, you know, we had a couple close games last year, so really looking to, to revenge some of those. Um, but, man, con continuing the streak against uh, Oklahoma, uh, we get them back at home again, so looking to make it three years in a row. Uh, you know, Texas gave us a, a whooping um, in our last game, so we're really, really excited about that game uh, just for the opportunity to, you know, you know, we weren't ourselves that game. and We've really built a new identity that we really fall behind. Um, you know, the vision that Coach Kleiman sees as, as our program. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very excited to show off what we're tr truly like and our culture that we bring and uh, the attitude and character and, you know, all the – everything that we've done this offseason, we're, we're really excited for that game, I think. And, uh, and then obviously, you know, making it another year against KU. So uh, that one's always marked. Um, on the calendar and then same with, you know, ISC, we played a really poor game against them. So we're excited for another opportunity to really show who we are and um, make that rivalry um, not a blowout. Cause you know, that was not, not what it should be. Uh, we played a really bad game that day, um, but man, we're ready to turn around against some, some of those games that we had, you know, some close ones and some blowouts. We're ready um, to show our, show our true colors and um, really go out there and, you know, be, be physical and just play our brand of football. Exactly. That's that's all you can do. Just be exactly. And play the play your guys' brand of football. So right. with your freakishly athletic talents, I know you played everywhere on the field. I, I've seen you played everywhere on the field. So right. where does Kansas State have you on the field? Like what position are you playing? So Kansas? I've been playing a little bit of a uh, nickelback and um, uh, free safety. Uh, so I've been uh, so I'm in the safety group. Um, I played a little bit in high school, played a little free, not, uh, not much, Played a, a year of it just to get pulled up to varsity because uh, we had a really good quarterback that year and really good receiver. So it wasn't really an option for me to play as the, on the offensive side of the ball, but uh, so they gave me the opportunity on the defense. So I'm um, bringing it back to that. You know, my dad was a career as a running back and played defensive back in Notre Dame. So uh, we're kind of go through, going through the same boat, which is pretty cool, really neat experience. But yeah, actually really love defense. Um, you know, went in there thinking, oh, you know, I think I know a lot. And, man, I sat in that first meeting. I'm like, damn, I got to take this all in. I mean, it's it's a lot more than you think. You know, you watch it on TV, you coach it up a little bit, man. It's, it's a little bit more to it, but uh, it's really fun, man. I, I really love the opportunity that they've given me. They've put me in the best, you know, situation to get on the playing field and get some PT. So just, man, just really, really thankful for the opportunity to be even be there. So, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, it's probably overwhelming just seeing like seeing all that it's like a, right right you walk into math class one day and like bam here's a test you're like wait whoa whoa you didn't even tell me about that like <laughs> whoa whoa so speaking about like you being like overwhelmed about like all the all the stuff that like they brought to you yeah. how was the transition from high school sports to college sports especially man like, i mean um it's it's a tough one, man. It's it's a it's a complete game changer. 
uh, two levels, you, you know, you think, man, oh, this, this is pretty close, man. And it's really not, you know, I mean, you got to really love the sport to really, you know, stay involved with it. Um, I mean, you got days where you're there for six hours and you got class, you got lifting, you got meetings, you got seven on. I mean, there's so much going on. And then when, I mean, when you're in season, you're there from one thirty to, you know, seven every day and you got a morning lift and you got your classes. And so, you know, it's a 12 month thing, man. Like this is my really a majority of my time that I actually get off. So just making the most of that right now, it's getting the opportunity to spend it with my family, but it's a, it's a commitment, but man, you know, it's something, you know, you dream about and I'm sticking with it. And I, I love, you know, I love it. There's days that it really sucks, but you got to embrace the suck. And so, um, you know, it's, I chose it. So I put myself in this situation and, you know, I'm ready to battle whatever comes in front of me. Yeah. Like honest, like, like how you said it, if you love it, you're going to keep on doing it until right. however long it takes you to just stop doing it. So exactly. I, I, I embrace that. I embrace that motivation and keep on doing what you're doing at K-State. Got yes, your supporter right here. I got you. I got you. I appreciate you, brother. Before, before you go, before you go, I got two questions for you. One, the NFL schedules dropped early this week. Yes, sir. What are you what are you thinking about the Dolphins? And then two, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Oh man. Uh Dolphins, I'm really looking forward to our week two matchup. Uh very, very excited about that one. Uh that should be a good one. I'm re- I'm excited to start off with the Patriots and end with them. Um, but you know, I'm looking forward to our, our matchup week two. I think um uh, with our draft picks, I think we bring a lot to the table, a little bit more experience this year with you know Tua and a uh, new offense coordinator that I think that will fit, you know, his uh, style of play a little bit better. So really excited to see what they put on, you know, put on the field. We lost a couple guys on defense, but really excited about Jalen Phillips and uh, the safety from Oregon. So really a lot of great opportunities ahead for them. And I'm really excited to see what we do. And, you know, hopefully uh, we'll be talking that week and uh, hopefully in my favor, but you know, it is what it is and whatever outcome happens, but, uh, really excited for this year, especially, you know, it sucks not making the playoffs after going 10 and six, you know, so, um, but you know, uh, yeah, 17 games this year. So it should be really interesting how a lot of these uh, teams perform, uh, not only in the beginning, but really, you know, how they finish off playing that extra game. Yeah. And then team wise, oh, you know, I mean, Brady's got a lot of re- returners, man. And, you know, you can't bet against the GOAT. So I'm going to have to go with the Bucks again. I mean, they they were legit last year. They, you know, they didn't have that um, camaraderie, you know, to start off the year. Um, but that really – they started to really uh, stick together and play really, really good football towards the end of the year. And that's really when it matters. So uh, they are able to do that. And I, I think they got a lot of special, special seasons ahead whenever, you know, he decides to retire. But – you know, I think it's going to be another one uh, for the Buccaneers this year. It would be a very special team. Yeah, the the Bucs returning all their starters make – Right, man. I was playing them this year, ah, I'd be shaking in my boots, man. But, right, but, right on, man, right on. Oh, oh no, I, I think I might have to go with the Bucs, too, winning the Super Bowl again. I don't know yeah. what to really stop them. Bill's side of things. I'm excited for. I'm excited to play the Dolphins this year. I'm. I'm right. really, really just. I'm really excited to see what the Dolphins are made of. What Tua was made of. Brian Flores. I, I love the Dolphins. I love them. Yeah. But, you know when we play them, I, I can't side. But you can't. You're right. Absolutely. I understand how it works, man. Exactly. Exactly. But thank you so much, Matt, for coming on to 1497 podcast. Absolutely. This interview. Go have fun, man. Go, go, go live life. Hey, my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity to be on here, man. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you, catch up, and uh, you know, want to make sure these people listen and uh, really enjoy your content. So, you know, keep spreading the word, man. We love, we love you. Keep doing your thing, man. Yes, sir. We, I love you too, man. Hey, tell your parents I love them too. Tell them I'm absolutely, absolutely. Later, Later, man. man. Appreciate you. No problem. No problem. All right. So basically, Russ makes his. Oh, you can you can leave too, Matt. All right. So anywho, Matt's about to leave. Get back with me. Get back with your favorite person, Mr. King. 
Jonathan King. Let's get right into it. Russell Westbrook. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done hearing the slander about Westbrook. I'm absolutely tired of it. Oh, he had stats. Oh, he's not a good player. Stop it. Stop it now. Stop it now. I'm about to get into Westbrook, and I'm about to get into it right now. I promise you I was going to get into Westbrook. Let's talk about it. Russell Westbrook breaks a 47-year-old NBA record. You want to know what that was? Triple doubles. Oscar Robinson, Mr. Triple Double himself, held that record for 47 years, and a man named Russell Westbrook out of the university, or UC, UCLA, came into the league and started averaging triple doubles after triple doubles. Russ got his 182 triple double Monday against the Atlanta Hawks. And there's more to it than just his 182 triple doubles. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited right now. Russ is on track to record a triple double or average a triple double for his fourth straight season. Russ is one shy from setting his own single season triple double record with the res- with the Wizards. He also has a chance to get the Washington Wizards in the play in the play-in tournament. In the play-in tournament. Now, a lot of a lot of people don't like the play-in tournament. But here's why I like it. Here's why I love the play-in tournament. It gives me NCAA March Madness buys. You want to know why? We saw the last four. We saw UCLA, a team like I'm gonna piggyback off what I just said. We saw a team like UCLA go from one of the last four teams to one game, be almost beating Gonzaga. Gonzaga beat them by a buzzer beater, losing to a buzzer beater. If they would have won that game, they would have been in the championship. And they were the last, one of the last four teams to be in. Now, in the NBA standpoint, it brings it brings a whole new atmosphere to it where it's you win or you go home. And if I'm playing a team like Washington or the Golden State Warriors, which I'll get into in a minute, I'm not going to – I'm going to be scared by watching how Russell Westbrook is playing right now and watching how Steph Curry is playing right now. I'll get to Steph in a minute. But – Russ, when he records a triple double, is 136 and 46. On top of that, too, Russell Westbrook recorded a triple double in his last, in 22 of his last, recorded a triple double 22 times out of his last 26 games. That is absolutely absurd. That is great. I, I don't even know how to describe that. That's absolutely insane. And Russ, He's going to keep it up. I think that's going to be Russ's record for a very long time. And if Russ notches a triple-double in one of his last three games, they're playing right now. They're playing against the Cavs. I don't know I don't know what the score is to that. He would have had gotten a triple-double in his last 30 and 39 of his last 72 games, 54% of the Wizards games. He did that. He only did, in OKC, he only did that 51%. And on top of this, too, one of these players is in the MVP conversation. So this is really saying a lot right now. He's averaging more rebounds than Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid. Russ is averaging 11 and a half rebounds per game. Giannis is averaging 11. Jokic is averaging 10.9. And Joel is averaging 10.6. I am done with the Russell Westbrook slander. At the end of the day, when his career, when he hangs up the jacket and he walks off to the sunset, I think Russell Westbrook will be a top 10 point guard of all time. I rest my case. I'm, I'm kind of getting sick over here. I, I, it doesn't sound like it, but I'm kind of getting sick over here. You want to know why? Because I'm catching Steph Curry fever, baby. I'm catching Curry fever. Because the way Curry is playing, I'm going to say it here, and I'm going to say it now. Jokic has been my number one guy for the MVP race. He has been playing outstanding. But, but, but I'm going to say this. I think, I think, 
I think Curry, I think Curry is going to, I think Curry should win it. I really do. I, I think Curry should win MVP because he is playing better than he did in two of his MVP seasons. I'm just like, this MVP race is going to be tight. It's going to be very, very tight. And if they give it to Jokic, I'm not going to be mad at that because I've been saying that they should, I've, I've been saying they should give it to Jokic. But I think now, when you really look at things, the MVP means the most valuable player. And with, like, let's say Jamal never got injured, they, the Nuggets still have a pretty good team. So I think, like, them losing Jokic wouldn't take that much of a hit. But when they use – or when they – with the Warriors side of things, I'm not saying, like, those players are bad that – on the Warriors side, but the Warriors would not be a playoff team right now. They they would not. They would be a lottery team. And let's talk about let's talk about Curry. During the month of April, Curry averaged thirty seven point three points per game. You're probably listening to this right now. I'm probably like Jonathan. That, that like that's Curry. Oh, uh, let me add more on to that. He was shooting fifty one point eight from the field, forty six point six behind the arc. And on top of that, Curry in 15 contests throughout the month of April, Curry scored 32 or more, 13 out of those 15 games. Let me say it again. 13 out of those 15 games, Steph dropped 32 or more. Let's let's move on with some more. He was also averaging 6.1 rebounds and 4.6 assists per game in the month of April. He had the most threes ever in a single month, first player in NBA history to average 35, 35 points, well, yeah, 35 points and shoot in the 50-40-90 club. And ladies and gentlemen, the 50-40-90 club is when you shoot 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the free throw. Curry was doing that in a whole month span, and no one's, he's the first player to do that in a calendar month. He has the most 30 plus point 30, 30 plus point games ever in the month of April. Then Curry also became the one, the only NBA player to in the M, in NBA history, excuse me, to score 30 points or more in 11 in 11 consecutive and 11 consecutive games at 33 or older. The last person to do that, the late great Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant held the record before with 30 or more points in 10 straight games. It's just absolutely crazy how Steph is playing right now and how much he means to that Golden State Warriors team. And I want to touch on something real quick. LeBron is a great player. He's always been a great player. And when he hangs up his jacket, he's going to be in the all in the top five greatest of all time. He's Steph, he's definitely going to he's Second, he's second. But as of right now, in the MVP race, because sports writers, they go on and vote for MVP. Chris Bouchard and Rachel Nichols, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I, I like your guys' work, but how can you vote LeBron at the at the MVP conversation? Because I get I get he's 36. I get that. But like his team is not really taking that much of a hit without him. Like they were able to like scramble, like they were able to not scramble. They were able to win games without him. And on top of that, they have a great bench. They have Dennis Schroeder, Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma, who's actually playing really good basketball now. And they added Andre Drummond too. And of course, you have Anthony Davis. So it's like that team is still good enough where that team could succeed at a high level. But teams like like Washington and Golden State, Washington, without Westbrook right now, the, I, don't, I don't even know where would Washington, the Washington Wizards would be. I probably, I don't even know where I'd find them. But there's a, I don't even know where I'd find them. The Warriors, I already said, the Warriors would be a lottery team if Curry wasn't playing right now. And on top of that too, Draymond Green was not an all-star this season. Now, we know Draymond's a great defender, but offensively, it's just Curry. 
It's just Curry right now. And James Wiseman went down with an injury, was out for the season. So it's just Curry, and he's doing this. But I'm going to get into more stuff in a minute. Just wait. I, I'm rambling right now, but it, it's a great time to ramble. It's a great time. It's a great time. Steph is averaging more points in this MV, in both of his MVP seasons. Steph is shooting 48.3%, for, uh, 42.1%. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 42.1% from deep on 12.6 attempts and 91.8% from the free throw. So if Steph shoots very good, like lights out in this game and their last game coming up, he could he could be in the 50-40-90 club. Just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Curry leads the league in three-pointers made. That's the fourth time in his career he has made 300 threes, which is absolutely amazing. Curry surpassed Jordan and the late great Kobe Bryant for the most 40-point games in a month at 33 or older. And it's it's not done yet. Curry topped James Harden for the most NBA most – or for the NBA most made threes in the calendar month. Curry passed. Curry joined Elgin Baylor, excuse me, and Jerry West as the only player to average 37 while shooting 50% from the field, 90% from the free throw during a 22 game span. So he's doing a lot of great stuff and joining a lot of great basketball players in that conversation. When Curry has not played this season, the Warriors are one and seven. He hasn't missed that many games, too, but that goes to show when Curry is not on the floor, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad things that are not going or there's not. Yeah, there's a lot of bad things that aren't going right for that team. And to put the cherry on top, the Warriors are 37 and 33, three games behind the Lakers. If I would have asked you where would the Warriors be this season? Nine times out of 10, or nine people I asked out of 10 would tell me they would be a lottery team and they wouldn't even be in this position that they're in right now. Right behind the, the reigning NBA champs, too? Come on out. Come on out. I, I rest my case. I rest my case. I rest it. Let's talk about Nikola Jokic, though. Nikola Jokic, I haven't forgot about you. I haven't. I haven't forgot about you. He hasn't missed the game this season. They're 12 and 5 with Jamal Murray, or since Jamal Murray's got injured. And he needs one more triple double to tie Fat Lever's most single season triple doubles in Nugget franchise history. The way that the Nuggets are going right now, they're going in the right direction. And I just love everything that's going right for them because it's rare to see like a center dictate and direct a whole offense, and Jokic has definitely been doing that this year. And on top of that, he's been making the players better around him because since Gary Harris is gone, and Gary Harris and Jamal Murray were a big part of them in their playoff run last year. So I'm I'm very interested to see, like, how the Nuggets are going to perform. I think they're going to perform well because they still have Aaron Gordon, and they still have a couple bench players that has played really, really good basketball. And with Jokic being able to, like, dictate and be that conductor of the offense at such a big level, six like 6'10", and being a center is absolutely insane because as a defense, it throws you off because you're like, well, if he can – if I can't guard him from the half-court line all the way to the paint, that's going to be scary for me because that's going to open up the floor for everyone else. So I can't wait to see the Nuggets play. I think that they stay in their position right now. I think they're six. They play the Clippers. And the Clippers, they got a lot of they got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of proving to do too. So hopefully the Clippers get back on track. But if it doesn't, I'll say it like this. I think Curry should win based off of what I just said. But if it goes to Jokic, goes to Jokic. If Jokic doesn't win, Curry should win. I'll put it as a put it as a. 
as the playoffs get closer and closer, I'm going to tell you the teams to watch out for. I'm going to start off with the Miami Heat. Miami Heat, and here's why you should watch out for Miami Heat. They got that man, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is the heart and soul of the Miami Heat. He is the heartbeat of the Miami Heat. If he's doing well, the whole team is doing well. It's a domino effect. And it all starts with Jimmy Butler. And the way that Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler reminds you of Russell Westbrook. He reminds you of Russell Westbrook because his effort is absolutely insane. And you would want, you want that in a player, especially on your team too, because you know from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, throughout the whole game, he is going to give you 110%. And that's going to build energy off your players. And that's just going to make you perform better, better, and better. So that's a team that I'm really watching out for. Also, they got a lot of great talent on that team too, especially that can shoot the ball. Duncan Robinson, a.k.a. what I call him, don't go, don't go, can shoot the lights out the ball, man. Tyler Hero is a great shooter, too. Jimmy is also another great shooter, shooting well from the three right now. And they got that man down low, Bam, Bam out of bio. Doesn't fall into the shooting category, but he's a great defensive player, and he's up for defensive player of the year this year. So there's a lot of great things going for them. And they got a great coach, too, that's won back-to-back finals and won finals before. So... There's a lot of good things going for the Miami Heat. The Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns. I'm going I'm to get it started out of this. If I asked you where the Phoenix Suns would be this year, what would you say? I'm guessing you'd probably say they're still a playoff team. But you wouldn't tell me they're second in the Western Conference. Possibly could be first. You wouldn't say that to me. If, you, if you're saying, yeah, you, you just lie. You lie. The lie detector has detected that was a lie because you would not have said that to me in the start of the year. And, like, yeah, I get that, like, they were doing so good in the bubble. And they were. They were undefeated in the bubble. But with the NBA defense and, yeah, with the NBA defense, it's easy to guard someone and it's easy to send coverages out because, You have – it's not like like every single game, people – teams are going to play that star player different. And if that player is not – if that player is the only player that's producing for the Phoenix Suns, and that was Devin Booker, it's going to be easy to stop that offense because it's a one-dimensional offense. If Devin Booker is the only guy that's going, no one else is going to really, like, like feed off of that because your first instinct is going to be, okay, I'm going to give it to the guy that's on fire, and that's Devin Booker. Adding Chris Paul to the mix made them, made their win percentage shoot, shoot up. It was, it was, I was watching NASA and I was watching the United States rocket just go up to the moon. That's, that's how, that's how good their, their one percentage shot up. And Chris Paul, out of basketball standpoint, Chris Paul is a veteran, so he, he's doing what veterans are doing or what veterans do. He's teaching the young guys, and he's developing the young guys and making them better and better and better. DeAndre Aiden's playing better. D-Book is always going to be D-Book, but D-Book can play his true position now, and he's making all the other young guys develop at such a great rate that I'm excited to see them in the playoffs with the Chris Paul team because it's the CP3 effect. Every team that he's on is successful. And when you don't think they're going to be very, very successful, they are. And like the Phoenix Suns, they haven't been this successful since. Steve Nash, Mari Stoudemire, that Phoenix Suns team. So I'm excited to see that. Portland. I'm excited to see Portland play because Dame Willard, how Dame is performing right now. CJ McCollum is playing very good basketball and they're getting wins when it matters. What is the playoffs? Got it. Win four straight, but not only, or you got to win four games, 
But not only that, it's at the top of the top. It's at a platform that not a lot of teams can play on. And the way that they're playing right now, that's a scary team to watch out for in a seven-game series. So I, I'm excited for the Portland Trailblazers. Utah and Milwaukee, they fit in the same category that I'm about to say. Utah and Milwaukee got a lot of proving to do because every time they have a they, – they're a great regular season team, and when it comes to the playoffs, they're like dinosaurs. They're non-existent. They're just not there anymore. So Milwaukee, especially with that – Especially with them adding Drew Holiday, they got a lot of proving to do in the in the playoffs because if they don't succeed in the playoffs and keep on going to the same spot and get eliminated in the same spot, they're going to be mediocre for a very very long time. So they got a lot of proving to do. Utah, Utah blew a three one lead against Denver. So they got to get that burden off their back. And they also got to get the burden off of we can't win in the playoffs because as the general NBA audience, if you're looking at the slate of teams in the playoffs that well already clinched their spot in the, in the playoffs, you're looking at it as, well, Jazz are not going to do anything. The Jazz always do this in the playoffs. Like they're, they're a great regular season team, but as playoff wise, they're not a good playoff team. So they got a lot of proof to do. And I think that's going to really drive a fuel in them and make them play good in the playoffs because they have a lot of critics that they need to prove on. Same with Milwaukee, same with Philadelphia. Because Philadelphia against Miami last night did not look pretty at all. And it looked like Philadelphia is going down the same route that they always been going, going down. And that's losing early in the playoffs. I'm just saying. The New York Knicks. The New York Knicks. If I asked you where would the New York Knicks be right now, you would probably tell me that, that they won't be they won't be a four seed. The way that the Knicks have been going, the path that the Knicks are on is absolutely incredible because Julius Randle is playing out of his mind. He's playing the best that he's ever played in his career. Tom Thibodeau is gathering all that young talent, putting pieces together, and they are a great basketball team that would always that I would watch out for too. And Thibodeau has always been a great defensive coach. And New York is always known for, well, the Knicks have been known for great defensive basketball. They're the best defense in the league right now. And Defense wins you championships, as a wise man once said. Offense wins you games. Defense wins you championships. So watching the Knicks in the playoffs, it's going to be very, very exciting to see all that young talent and see what they can do in the playoff platform. Tibbs been there, so they're definitely getting advice. And they got a couple of playoff, playoff players that have been to the playoffs before. Derrick Rose, Taj. This goes on and on and on. That's another team I'm watching out for. The NFL is back. Kind of. It, it's kind of back. The reason I say that is it was a special day. It was a very special day earlier this week. It makes me, it makes me think, wow, football is right around the corner. It makes me tear up. You want to know why it makes me tear up? Because the NFL schedules drop. That means... In a couple months, we get to see our lovely friends, Jim Nance. We get to see Tony Romo. We get to see the NFL on CBS. We get to see the NFL on Fox. Oh, snap. It's the NFL on CBS. It's the NFL on CBS. We get to see that, and we get to see a lot more football. Not only that, we get to see the talent. We get to see all the talent, all the moves, see if the moves did really good this offseason. The NFL schedule. These are my favorite games that drop. I think these are going to be notable games that everyone's going to be watching. So let me get right into it. Bills, Chiefs, Buffalo. We, as a Buffalo fan, it was a great run in the playoffs. We haven't been that deep of the run since the 90s. Getting our first playoff win in a long, 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 long time against the Indianapolis Colts. I'll always remember that. That was the happiest day of my life. It was like Christmas 2.0 for me. We got we to gotta go in and kick some 
catch some Chiefs booty. I, I was very sad to see us lose to the Chiefs, and we got absolutely annihilated by the Chiefs. So walking into that game week eight, I'm excited for it. Chiefs and the Browns week one. Reason I'm excited for that, Cleveland has got better. And what I mean got better, they got a lot better. Their defense is right now on paper a top three defense in the league. Yeah, I said it, a top three defense in the league. Want to know why? Because all the defense acquisitions that they made during the offseason. And on top of that, on the offense side of the ball, they got two top 10 running backs, top 15, Kareem Hunt, but still, a top 10 offensive line, great wide receivers, and a good quarterback, Baker Mayfield. Then you got the Chiefs. I don't even, I don't even mean to say anything about the Chiefs. When, when you hear the Chiefs, you get scared, including myself. I start shaking a little bit. Got that man, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill. And then you look at the coaching staff, got Eric Bianami and Andy Reid. I'm already, like, I'm, I'm kind of shaking right now. Doesn't sound like I'm scared, but uh, let's move on. Then you got the Chiefs and the Ravens. Yeah, Lamar, this is a proven year for Lamar. Lamar's got his offensive weapon, a steal of the draft for Sean Bateman, and he's, he's, he's got Mark Andrews, he's got Marquise Hollywood Brown. This is the year that Le, but Lamar, Lamar, excuse me, Lamar needs to show everyone that he can pass the football. If he does that, who knows? Bucks and the Rams. Oh, wait, I skipped over a whole game. Giants and the Washington football team. Two great defenses going at it. Bucks and the Rams. Matthew Stafford versus Tom Brady. Defense on defense, offense on offense. Great offensive line versus another great offensive line. Great coach against great coach. You got to circle that game on the calendar because my, oh my, that's going to be one hell of a game to watch, especially with the Rams this season because the Rams are in the position where it's boomer bucks. It's boomer bucks. So Matt Stafford, I think Matt Stafford's going to go crazy this season. Bucks in the past. Everyone's got that circled because of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Who is the leader of the dynasty? Who did this? Who did that? In all honesty, it's 50-50. Tom Brady did what Bill Belichick had to do. Bill Belichick did what he had to do. Bill Belichick coached Tom Brady. Tom Brady did what Bill Belichick did. Therefore, they won plenty of Super Bowls. Made me mad because I didn't want to see the Patriots win. I, I, I don't like the Patriots. That's the division rival. I, I just don't like it. But you got to give credit with credit to Bucks and the Patriots, week four. Chargers and Browns. Reason I say the Chargers and the Browns because Justin Herbert, the way that he played against Kansas City, I think was week two, was absolutely like you knew that was the guy. That was the guy for the Los Angeles Chargers. They picked up Rashawn Slater in the draft, made that offensive line better. They got a great running back in Austin Eckler and still got a pretty good receiving core. Watch them go crazy against that Cleveland Browns team. That's going to be a great game to watch. The Colts and the Ravens. Colts. Carson Wentz, this is a proving year for Carson Wentz as well. With the amount of talent that Carson Wentz has been given, if he does bad, a lot of bad criticism is going your way. So watch out for Carson Wentz to have a great season. Watch out for Lamar to have a great season. And let's move down to the game. Arizona Cardinals and the Cleveland Browns. Arizona, they added, they added fire. They added fire to their team. They added A.J. Green, J.J. Watt. There's, another, there's a, a lot of more notable moves that they made in the offseason, but that team is going to be filthy. Filthy. It's going to be a great thing to watch, and them playing against the Browns, that's just two great teams going at it. I'm loving it. Browns and the Ravens. Their matchup, that's going to be that's going to be good, especially what we saw last year and the Browns and the Ravens when the Ravens needed to win. That that was one of the best games of the year that I watched. Rams and the Cardinals got D Hop versus Galen Ramsey. Defense on offense, defense on the other offense. Both very great matchups. Chiefs and the Chargers, like I said, we got a great matchup with the Chiefs and the Chargers earlier in the season last year. 
and we got a little preview of what Jay Herb was going to look like. Bills and the Pats. I love, I love me a good little smackdown that we give to the Pats. It's going to be tougher this year because they got a lot of notable players coming back to defense. But hey, I'm ready for it. And then the Cards and the Cowboys and Ravens and the Rams. As we wrap up the show today, let's talk about the Lakers and let's talk about what they need to do to secure the sixth spot in the playoffs. They have to win out and hope the Blazers lose. I think they're playing tonight. Blazers are 41 and 30. Lakers are 40 and 30. Now, if the Blazers win their final games, and the Lakers win their final games, the Blazers are still going to be at 60 to the playoffs because they have a lovely little thing called a tiebreaker above the Los Angeles Lakers. So the Lakers need the Blazers to lose in order for them to get that six spot. If not, they are playing in the lovely thing I call the play in tournament. The Lakers last games is against the Packers or not the Packers. <laughs> it's, it's against it's against the Pelicans and um it's against the Pacers and the Pelicans. I don't know why I said Packers. <laughs> the Blazers has one more game left and that's against the Nuggets. Like I said, the Lakers got to win. They got to win their next two. And the Blazers got to lose one. Portland, they also have excuse me, they also have the tiebreaker against Dallas too. So Dallas lose one game and the Timber or not the Timberwolves. God, if, if the Blazers win their next like their last game, then they can move up to the fifth spot cuz they have that lovely little thing called tiebreaker too. So, yeah, it's an exciting time for sports. Lollapalooza might come back to Chicago. Summer Smash is going to be here. It's going to be – I can't wait. I can't wait. We're, go have fun in the sun. Go have a great Friday night. Go out and kick it. Go out and do something fun. I'm Jonathan Keaton. I'm your host for 1497 Podcast. I want to say thank you again for Matthew Mashmar for coming on to the show. And that was a great show. If you haven't yet and you're still listening, I appreciate – you listening all the way through. I'm, I, I appreciate it a lot. Please go subscribe to us. We're on every podcasting platform. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating. Give us a nice little comment. Follow us on Instagram at 1497podcast. Same thing on TikTok at 1497podcast. As always, trust the process. Live life. Live to the fullest And I'll catch y'all next Friday with another special guest. As always, peace and love. Trust the process. I'll catch y'all crazy. I'll catch catch y'all crazy kids later. Later. Peace.